Day has dawned and shadows are left behind. We gather for worship in awe and wonder. The stone has been rolled away and the hope is reborn. So come people of God on this glorious day, celebrating and singing the good news that Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia, amen. For this day for this is the day that you have made and we rejoice and we're glad to be in it 
We're glad to come to worship on this day, the day that Christ is risen and Christ is risen indeed. So now as we come to worship, let us come to worship through you, through the risen Christ. Alleluia. Amen. Good morning and welcome to online worship here at Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church on this wonderful and glorious Easter morning. I'm glad that you've taken time out of your day to spend Easter morning with us. A few reminders, if you haven't already gone to your pantry to go ahead and get your communion elements ready so you can take part in the great feast later in this service. And other reminders that on Tuesday evening at seven o'clock central time, our Paz Spirit Group will be gathering via Zoom. That information will be available on Facebook through our website and also in the weekly. Then on Thursday next week at 6.30 Central Time, join us for Theology on Tap as we come back together and have an evening of theological and just general conversation with one another. That information also is on Facebook, on our website, as well as the weekly. And then one week from today will be our virtual fellowship, our virtual coffee hour. Join us next Sunday following worship at noon on Zoom to get together to see everybody virtually and come together and spread some joy with one another. That information also is on our Facebook page, on the website, as well as the weekly. So now as we come together on this glorious Easter morning, let us hear God's word. Our epistle lesson this morning comes from 1 Corinthians, verses 1 through 11, taken from the Inclusive Bible. Sisters and brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and in which you stand firm. You are being saved by it at this very moment, if you hold fast to it as I preached it to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. I handed on to you, first of all, what I myself received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried and in accordance with the Scriptures rose on the third day, that he was seen by Peter, then by the Twelve. After that, he was seen by more than 500 sisters and brothers at once, most of whom are still alive, although some have fallen asleep. Next, he was seen by James, then by all the apostles. Last of all, he was seen by me, as one yanked from the womb. I am the least of the apostles. In fact, because I persecuted the church of God, I do not even deserve the name. But by God's favor, I am what I am. This favor that God has given to me has not proven fruitless. Indeed, I have worked harder than all the others, not on my own, but through the grace of God. In any case, whether it be I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. May God bless the hearing of these words.
gospel lesson this morning comes from Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8, taken from the Inclusive Bible. When the Sabbath was over, Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought perfumed oils so that they could anoint Jesus. Very early, just after sunrise on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, Who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked, they found that the huge stone had been rolled back. On entering the tomb, they saw a young person sitting at the right, dressed in a white robe. They were frightened, but the youth assured them, Do not be amazed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, the one who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. Now go and tell the disciples and Peter, Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee, where you will see him just as he told you. They made their way out and fled from the tomb, bewildered and trembling. But they said nothing to anyone because they were so afraid. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks be to God. Amen. come to prayer with me on this wonderful Easter morning. Loving God, we know you are the one who continues to show us the way of unconditional love in our lives, allowing us to fulfill your perfect will even when we're unable. We know that just because this building is still closed, that you continue to show us that the church continues to stay alive and open and vibrant. We are undefeated whether together or apart. You never leave us behind, and as we come and experience the resurrection on this Easter morning, continue to allow us to receive the gifts of your presence in our lives. Let us celebrate this day with Easter joy, allowing us to have this day once again soon, bringing us back together in person. So I ask now that you touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day, and the words that come from my mouth, along with the meditations on each and every one of our hearts. Let them ever be acceptable to you. In Christ we pray, amen. So what a joy it is to be able to gather with you on this morning, even though it's not our typical, what we're used to Easter morning being in person, and yet it's our second virtual Easter with one another. It's wonderful to be with you. But know that we're gathered through Christ's spirit this morning, and that the hope that comes in the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
but I want to say that the Easter message is good news for everyone, not just for those of faith, but those who are even searching. It's even for those who think that they have all the answers and for those who may just be in question. No matter how old we are, no matter where you're worshiping from this morning, God has connected us and connected us for a reason because the good news is the good news of this day. Today, people from around the world, from different countries, different walks of life, different languages, and even different spectrums will celebrate a Jewish carpenter who ministered for only about three years who never traveled more than 40 miles in one venture, never wrote a best-selling novel or a bazillion followers on Facebook, but yet is known around the globe. It's a mystery beyond belief. But church family, the tomb is empty. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. When you're weary and feeling small is one of the great opening lines from one of the most popular songs of all time, Bridge Over Troubled Water, which was written by Paul Simon back in 1969. Now, some of you weren't born yet, but then the 1960s were a great era for many people and many great things came out of that era of time. I think that we've all felt a little weary, a little small over this past year. And as out the hours and days turn into months and years, it will become harder and harder to see what really what we see and what we saw over this past year. Because what we really want to see was how all things were going to turn out. In fact, I think we're still waiting to see what the final outcome will be. It's just like if you want to fast forward to the end of a movie or turn to the final chapter to see how the book ends. But if you've been weary and if you've been feeling small, well, you've been in good company over these past 12 months or so. I must admit that Paul Simon wrote that beautiful song during a time when he was listening, believe it or not, to the gospel music of the time. He said this song, which was influenced by Claude Jeter's line, I'll be your bridge over deep water, that Jeter sang with his group back in the day called the Swan Silverstones back in 1950, was an inspi inspiration to the words that Simon put to his song. Bridge over troubled water was clearly Simon's image and view of Jesus. Or that's what I discovered as I was doing some research on his song. What has become so resonant over the years and the past years that we have been in this weariness and we've been brought on by things that have come to be different in our lives because we really don't and we really don't know for some time how COVID is actually going to end. Ironically, this makes Mark's gospel and Mark's account of the record the resurrection become just as resonant to us this day. If you remember how Mark's gospel begins, and for those who need a little refresher course, Mark doesn't begin with the story of Jesus' birth, like we see in the gospels of Matthew and Luke, and not even with the creation story as in John's gospel. Mark's gospel begins with the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It wasn't the good news, but it was the beginning of the good news. Mark isn't going to tell the whole story of the good news, just the beginning. Mark then proceeds at almost record speed to tell the story of Jesus, the challenging teacher, Jesus, the compassionate healer, Jesus, the reconciler, the peacemaker, and finally, the story of the faithful Jesus, whose radical message and love was that transformation that was so threatening to the extent of the powers of the authorities arrested him, executed him, but fear that it seems that the triumph would come over love. 
So we need to pause for a moment because the story has just begun that continues. The tomb is empty. Jesus has been raised and has gone to Galilee. The women who first witnessed this are amazed and afraid and struck in silence. And here is where Mark ends his narrative. However, the story goes on. You see, this account of the empty tomb is clearly part of the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. All of us here today, right now, are part of the story of the good news of Jesus that is still going on. Folks, it's still unfolding. We belong to somebody who is going somewhere, and if that's not good news, well, I'm not sure what is. So how do we make their story our story? How do we find that bridge over troubled water? This may seem counterintuitive, but we need to surrender. That's how we find that bridge over troubled water. When we surrender, we need to know the end of the story. We can't know the end of the story because it hasn't been written yet. So we need to surrender our need to control that ending, the need to make it even a happy ending. We just don't know. And we need to go into that inner room within our heart. We need to find the time and to find the place for real prayer. We need to say the words if it's helpful, but to find the inner room in our hearts and invite Jesus to join us if we haven't already done so. You may be surprised to find that Jesus is already there and that the bridge is right before you. But you have to make sure that you're connecting. And of course, be honest with yourself while being honest with others about what you're experiencing. The key is, don't be a hero. Forget that nonsense because we're all vulnerable and we've all over this past year and even right now are still vulnerable in the good things that are happening because having a vulnerable heart is having an open heart. The great songwriter Leonard Cohen so wisely observed, there is a crack in everything. And that's how the light gets in. So let others see the light pouring in through the crack in your soul. Maybe pick up the phone, send a text message, but just as important, invite whoever you're reconnecting with to open up to you to share the crack in their soul as well. We need to listen deeply because real human connection is that great vaccine for fatigue. So the story goes on. Here today in our own time of fear, anxiety, and profound, deep fatigue, the story continues. We are, each one of us, are like the frightened women who were in front of that empty tomb on that day. Mark's account of the resurrection captures such a real human response that is filled with the deepest grief and weariness from their loss of hope when they saw that the tomb was empty. Their first reaction isn't joy, but it's fear. Now surely the young guy in the white robe is sitting next to the tomb that says, don't be alarmed. But it's easy for him to say, it's easy for us to say, right? But then through their terror and amazement from a place deep in their souls, these women found that little bit of courage. They find that courage that takes them to the next step and then another and another. They find the courage to push through that fatigue and weariness and even that grief. They find that courage to go in search of the bridge over troubled water. I want to say, my friends, we really don't know how the story ends when it comes to the COVID story or the pandemic story that we've been living because it's just a part of what the bigger story is yet to be. We know that there have been pandemics many far worse than the one we're in 
throughout the course of time. But in the midst of life, we know that there is always the reality of death. We know that there is not the ending to the bigger story. So on this Easter morning, this beautiful spring morning, we actually can look forward to the end of the story. Because in the end, we know that love wins. That's the Easter promise that has been given to each of us. The, that's the hope, the Easter hope, the Easter joy, and what we have not stranded in those troubled waters that are before us. This has been a year when many of us have had questions about the meaning of the purpose of life. But we need to hear the Easter message that brings resurrection and crucifixion that brings hope out of the hopeless, joy out of the sorrow, purpose out of the lack of direction. For Mark, the joy of Easter comes when we share the good news of the resurrection because we know God can use anybody, even the frightened women fleeing from the empty tomb, or even you and I. We can be scared and still act with compassion, faith, and courage. Courage is doing the right thing in spite of our fear, and God uses us regardless of our fears and our weakness and our faults. We are blessed to know that the story ends for Jesus. We know that he has been raised and he is exalted. He has been raised, he is not here, was the message from the angel. The angel that gives new hope to each and every one of us. Even as, and especially over this past year, as we've been living in what we have called so many new normals, that hope is there. Like the women, may we have courage to forge forward in our lives, allowing ourselves to be like those women who had the courage and were not afraid. May we commit ourselves to following Christ and serving Christ and serving those in our lives. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Blessing on this glorious Easter morning. Amen. Christ is risen. As we come to our time of offering, I hope that you are enjoying this worship service today. Easter is a special time for us as Christians as we celebrate our salvation. The greatest gift that God gave us is our salvation through Jesus Christ. And I hope that today this is, service has been very meaningful to you, along with the lead up that we've had during our Lenten season. As Christians, every day is special to us as our salvation, but Easter is a little extra special. This is our time of offering. If you haven't had a chance yet, if you're a regular member and you've done pledges, if you haven't given your gift, it's easy to do it on the website or through PayPal, or you can send a check in. You can drop an envelope in the church mailbox if you'd like to. If you've also hadn't had a chance to bring your Lenten challenge box in, if you have change or you want to drop that in the mail slot, you can do it. Or if you want to add it up and designate that as your Lenten challenge, if you haven't had a chance to do that, please do that too through the website. You can see a couple lilies here behind me. Normally, if we were meeting in worship, you would have had the opportunity to purchase flowers and we fill the sanctuary with flowers. And you were able to do that in remembrance of someone who was special to you, whether it was a family member or a spouse or someone who meant a lot to you, as we remember those saints on Easter and with the promise from God that someday we will all be back together in heaven. So if you'd like to take an opportunity this Easter and make a special gift for Easter, you can certainly do that and also mark that. If you would like to designate that as in remembrance to someone, that would be fantastic. It's an opportunity for you. If you'd like to give something extra on Easter to do so, and you can certainly mail that in or also do that through the website. I hope you enjoy this beautiful, wonderful Sunday, Easter Sunday, Christ is risen.
join the table on this Easter morning. If you haven't already gotten your communion elements, I invite you to quickly do so, so you can partake in this wonderful Easter meal. Faithful and holy, you are the creator of all. Blessed is Jesus, the Christ, the one who could have stayed at your side, came and to be the Emmanuel, the God with us. When he could have feasted over power, Jesus came to prepare a table for us, where our hardened hearts might be softened, our broken lives be made whole. When he could have had the angels wait on him, Jesus came to offer your forgiveness and grace, enduring the death on the cross, so we could have eternal life. It was on that night in the upper room when Jesus gathered with his disciples. As he took the bread, he blessed it and broke it and said to all, to take and to eat, as this is my body given for you. And each time that you eat of this, to do so in remembrance of me. Likewise, following the meal, Jesus took the cup from the table, blessed it and said to the people, this is the cup of my new covenant of my life that has been poured out for you and to all people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink from this often, and as often as you drink from this, do so in remembrance of me. And with this bread and with this cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in Jesus' death and the resurrection, and over ourselves, the praise and thanksgiving, and the holy and the living sacrifice, in unions with Christ's offering to us. So will you please pray with me? At this time, wherever we find ourselves, at home, our apartments, in care facilities, or finally able to be back in sacred spaces, pour out your Holy Spirit upon your people and upon the gifts of the Feast of the Resurrection. May the bread which is broken open like the tomb, strengthen us so we may go to rebuild shattered hopes to bind up the hurts of the world. May the cup which is filled with the fruits of your steadfast love nourish us to leave the shadows of your fears and doubts, to stand with the lonely and the forgotten, to listen to the cries of the world. And in that time to come, when we gather with our sisters and brothers in every place and every moment, we will sing your praises, God and community, holy and one, as you hold on to us forever. Amen. service is just yet to begin, 
So as we go out into the world on this day, on this glorious Easter day, we know that Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us go out into the world through God's tender mercies, love, and protection that is given to each and every one of us as we go out into the world through God the Creator, God the Savior, and God the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.